Hello, I'm Neil Quigley and welcome to the latest episode of my blogcast. Hope you are good and you had a fantastic Christmas. Mine kind of started the week before. This is an annual event that my uncle hosts. We always have a big family Christmas party, normally on the Saturday before Christmas itself. I come from quite a large family on both sides, on my mum's and dad's side. This party was led by my dad's brother, so it's his side of the family. If I have to organise a party, family alone, just aunts, uncles, cousins, second cousins, I'm already up to nearly 90 people. So there's lots of us. Obviously, with the world being as it is now and everybody being so busy, not everybody can always make every do. But there was a nice group of us who went up to his house. It's a free and easy event. You just rock up with your own drinks and they supply a bit of food. And we don't get to catch up that often nowadays. When I was a child, it seemed like we were having a family get together almost every couple of months. But now... Maybe once or twice a year, we all get together. Made sure I got round and chatted to everyone that was there. I am still not drinking at the moment, so I found myself some non-alcoholic Prosecco to enjoy, which was perfectly fine. Had a lovely time just having that, although there was lots of full of alcohol Prosecco doing the rounds, so I did have to be a bit careful just to make sure that I got the right drink, especially because I was driving as well. Linda came along. She has met the family a couple of times before, so it wasn't too daunting. Had a fantastic afternoon. Christmas songs on in the background and a good laugh with everybody. That was during the afternoon. That night, I had arranged to meet up with a couple of my best mates to have a pre-Christmas meal. So I left the family party with Linda, dropped her off at home and then headed off to meet my mates at a restaurant in Beaconsfield. Although there was one point where I wasn't sure if I was actually going to make it or not. I had to use the M25 to get there. And the second I turned onto it, it came to an absolute standstill because there was an accident up ahead. I had visions of me being stuck there all night and missing the meal completely. Luckily, it cleared relatively quickly and I was about 10 minutes late getting there. Although, as I arrived and was about to drive into the entrance to the car park, to the restaurant, a place where I've been before, so therefore I know there's one entrance and one exit. As I was about to turn into the entrance, I saw a car at the other end of it, and I wrongly presumed that they were going to stop and let me through. Not a chance. They just drove straight down the entrance, so I had to back up almost into the main road to let them out because there was nowhere to go. And they were looking at me like I was in the wrong. Not happy at all. Good job it was pre-Christmas and I was in a good mood. Managed to laugh it off. Unbelievable. Anyway, entering the car park the right way, I got parked up and then went inside to meet the others who, as it happened, were a bit delayed themselves and only got there about five minutes before me. In fact, we were five minutes late for our table. And when they got there, they were told our table had already been sold. I appreciate businesses have got to look after themselves and be careful that they're not left short by people not arriving when they booked. But we were five minutes late and they'd already got rid of our table, which seems a little bit harsh to me. They did, however, find us another one and we did have a fantastic evening. We are in Browns, which is a place that I can eat. Fair play to my mate who was organising it. He contacted me early on and said, look, where can you eat? And we'll book there. So we went to Brown's, which is celiac accredited and does a great selection of food. There was four of us there in total, although we did invite several others, but sadly they couldn't make it. It was a fantastic night. I don't think we stopped laughing or chatting from the moment we arrived until we left. Great fun. Lots of laughter, lots of reminiscing about the old days, because I've known these guys 
well over 20 years now. So we've got a lot of history, a lot to talk about. The food was great. I had a traditional turkey meal for my main, which was good. And as it turned out, the only turkey Christmas dinner I actually had this festive period. For starters, I had some apple and parsnip soup, which sounds like an odd combination, but was really nice. And then for dessert, apple and berry crumble. Perfect meal. Very, very enjoyable. We got there at about half past seven, and I think we left about 11. Fantastic evening. Just set me up nicely for the run into Christmas during the final week to get us to the big day itself. Actually had Christmas Eve off work this year, it being a Sunday, which was a nice change. I have worked a lot of Christmas Eves over the years. In fact, I've worked most days across the whole Christmas period in the past. So nice to get a few days off before Christmas Day this year. I spent Christmas Eve with Linda and we just had quite a relaxing day around the house, getting the final preparations done. And then that night, she decided it was time that I'd seen the film Elf. Believe it or not, had never seen it. She claimed it was one of the best Christmas films ever, so I thought I'd better see it. We watched it. I did enjoy it. It was really good. It was funny. It was entertaining. It was amusing. Later on that night, though, we ended up watching a program. I think it was on one of the Sky channels where they were basically looking at Die Hard and all the things that happened through the course of the film with a scientist. They were working out if they would have actually played out that way in real life. That was fascinating. And of course, as we know that Die Hard is a Christmas film, fitted in perfectly for some Christmas Eve viewing. I stayed at Linda's Christmas Eve. So we woke up together for the first time on Christmas Day, which was nice. I got up and got us some tea and coffee and we exchanged gifts and opened each other's presents. I did very well. I got a brand new pair of headphones that I wanted that I'm actually wearing now and I got a jumper and a few other bits. I was happy with the gifts I got her. We went to the Ida White Festival in 2021 and she is a Snow Patrol fan so I got her in a frame the lyrics to the Snow Patrol song Run written in the shape of a record disc with our names and the date of the Isle of Wight Festival printed on it in her favourite colour of green. I also bought her a luxury spa day for two at a well-known spa hotel. I'm hoping that she might take me. I've told her, of course, she could take anyone she wants. It's her present. It's a present for two. But I am still secretly hoping she might take me with her. And the other thing I got her was the new Stephen King book that she'd asked for. So that one was not really much of a surprise. I then headed off to my parents' house to get there in time for our fried breakfast, which is very much a tradition in the Quigley household at Christmas. My dad cooked that this year, and that was fantastic. Set us up perfectly. And then it was more tea and more present opening and exchanging. I did very well once again. I've got a couple of new books to read this year. The autobiography from Adrian Edmondson and the book from Lou Sanders to read, both of which I'm very much looking forward to, as well as lots of other very useful items, including something which should help with teeth cleaning. You know how nowadays every single dentist tells you to use those incidental brushes, which are great, but sometimes can be a bit abrasive. I saw this advertised on TV, so I thought I would ask for it and give it a try. It's basically a machine that shoots water jets very specifically that you should be able to use to clean in between your teeth like you would with those brushes. I haven't actually got around to starting to use it yet. I will give it a go hopefully the next week or so and I'll let you know how I get on. Once we'd exchanged presents, it was time for me to head off to meet my uncle at the local pub. That is a family tradition that has been going back as long as I can remember. When I was a child, I remember we used to go to my grandparents' house and they used to host a big Christmas Day dinner for the entire family. All of the adults at midday would disappear 
down the pub for a couple of hours. For years, I was desperate to go, but obviously was too young. As soon as I turned 18, I used to join everybody down the pub. And it's something I've done ever since. There used to be a group of anything up to 20 of us in the pub. Now it has dwindled a little bit. And this year it was just my uncle and a couple of my cousins. Nevertheless, we had a great time, a couple of hours just chatting. It's one of the few times nowadays I actually just get to catch up with him and have a good chat to him. So that was nice. I do like a walk to the pub at Christmas. It's just a chance to get a bit of fresh air and obviously burn off some calories and get yourself nice and hungry, ready for your Christmas dinner. Now, to help out with the Christmas dinner this year and make things easier for me and my parents, anything that would normally contain gluten, I offered to get and substitute to get a me-friendly version. So I looked after getting the stuffing, the Yorkshire puddings and the gravy and made them all gluten-free, which meant our entire Christmas Day dinner of roast chicken was gluten-free, which just makes my life so much easier and stops me worrying and means I can enjoy the meal. We had a great meal. I had such a lot of food on my plate and ate it all. And then for dessert, we had a lovely roulade. Again, something I can have because that is naturally gluten-free. I did have another bottle of non-alcoholic Prosecco to drink during the day, which, again, even though it had no alcohol in it, it made me feel like I was having a bit of a drink and enjoying the festivities. We actually ended up eating relatively late in the end. So after we'd eaten, it was time to watch the Christmas special of Strictly Come Dancing, which I thought was fantastic. Very, very good. As it was Christmas as well, we did manage to watch some Only Fools and Horses, which is one of my favourite sitcoms of all time. Love that programme. Still makes me laugh, even though I could almost quote every line word for word. Something I can also do with most Morecambe and Wise shows. It's Christmas, so we had to watch a bit of Morecambe and Wise as well. Really made the day for me. Normally, we end up playing a few games. This year, we didn't get round to game playing, but my dad is a big fan of karaoke. He actually has a couple of karaoke machines at home. So we fired one of those up and we all took turns in singing different songs. My dad can sing. My sister can sing. My mum can sing much better than me. I cannot sing at all. Terrible at it. Completely tone deaf. It's a shame. I would love to be able to sing. I like being on stage. I like performing. I just wish I could sing. If I could, I'd probably go to karaoke every night and hog the mic. Luckily, I can't, although I did try a couple of Bruce Springsteen numbers and do a few country songs. It was good fun. We'd done that for a couple of hours. I can only apologise if you live next door to my parents or even if you live on the same street, just in case we accidentally spoiled your Christmas with my terrible singing. After watching most of the horse racing on Boxing Day, I headed back to spend the rest of the day with Linda. We had a fantastic meal and a relaxing evening, just watching TV and catching up on how our own individual Christmas days had been. Now, one thing I always like to do this time of the year is go to a pantomime. For me, it doesn't feel like it's been Christmas until I've been to one. The first one I went to, I was about four. My dad took me to it. I remember the Smurfs being in it and I remember it featured the ABBA song, I Have a Dream. I've been hooked on them ever since. And for the last six years now, I've been going to the pantomime at the London Palladium. It's at one of the biggest theatres in London, of course. It's so spectacular the way they do it, the special effects, the costumes, the cast. It's brilliant. This year, I managed to get Linda and I a box to watch it, which sounds very glamorous and very fancy, and it kind of was. However, These tickets were sold as severely restricted view seats, which, to be fair, you're right at the side of the stage and some of the scenery does hide a portion of it. However, we could see 
most of the performance very clearly. And when any of the cast were front of stage, we had a great view. They were almost in our eye line, to be honest. And the tickets for this were £35 each, which I thought was an absolute bargain for your own box, where you could obviously hang your coats on the coat hooks and you've got plenty of room, just the two of you. And it does mean if you're sitting there, you haven't got to keep getting up and then sitting down to let people through. The show itself was, of course, brilliant. The cast include Julian Clary, Jennifer Saunders, Gary Wilmot, Nigel Havers, Paul Zerdin and Rob Madge. They were all fantastic. Panto is perfect for Mr Clary. He is the king or queen of innuendo. Every opportunity to make any sort of joke he can. And because everybody knows about him, his lifestyle, his previous stage work, making the jokes is just so easy. And he comes out in so many ridiculous and fabulous outfits. It is just crazy. The show this year was Peter Pan. But as Rob Madge points out during the performance, they're not really big on plot at the London Palladium. There is kind of a rough story every year, but it is just lots of very good and very clever set pieces, be that comedy routines, be that songs, be that normally a specialist act doing something fantastic at various points. Gary Wilmot every year does a ridiculously complicated song with thousands of words worth of lyrics to remember, which he nails every single time. It's almost just worth going for that alone. Nigel Havers sends himself up something rotten. Paul Zerdin and his friend Sam, again, always good. And you always get a top guest star like Jennifer Saunders, who, of course, was fantastic. Really good fun. It makes you feel Christmassy. There's so much laughter feel good show we'll be going again next year for sure absolutely love it then annoyingly i did have to do a couple of days work but it was fine it was just that strange bit between christmas and new year where everything's kind of a little bit slower a little bit easier a little bit more laid back than normal so that was fine then on the friday night Linda and I went and saw Hamnet. It's something that she'd been wanting to see for a while. I am a Shakespeare fan. I'm trying to see more and more of his plays. This was a story based on a book about William Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, and more about his wife as well. It was a Royal Shakespeare Company production at the Garrick Theatre in London. We had... A great night. The show was so good. The cast were fantastic. I think it's a sign of a good show when a two and a half hour show just goes so quickly. It keeps you captivated. It's very well done. The story is intricate yet easy to follow. And also, as part of the night, we did manage to grab an honest burger on the way to the theatre. Bearing in mind, it's been mostly Christmas leftovers for the last week, which I absolutely love. No problem there at all. However, having a nice burger and chips is kind of weirdly a bit of a treat at this time of the year. That was also the last theatre trip of the year, hoping to see many, many more shows in 2024. Hope you had a good New Year's Eve. Mine was lots of fun. Linda and I went to see some friends of hers just outside Northampton. It was half house party and half a night down their local pub, which was a black tie event. Now, I do like dressing up. I do have all the gear, mainly thanks to people I know. When I found out I was going to this particular do... I kind of remembered vaguely my mate Mike Sterling giving me a tuxedo that he no longer needed. Now, I'd kind of forgotten about it, but then remembered just in time. Tried it on before the party. It fitted a treat. So that was my outfit, proper tuxedo, white shirt, bow tie, looked the part, felt like James Bond. It was a fun night. It's always good to have an excuse 
to get dressed up. I was still not drinking alcohol, so it was on soft drinks and any non-alcoholic beverages I could find, but had a fun evening. There was music, there was good food, there was laughter, there was a very late night, and we did manage to get to a TV to see the fireworks from London at midnight as well and bring in 2024. So happy new year to you. Hope you have a fantastic year. Mine, I expect, will be busy, fun, exciting and interesting. But as ever, my plan is to keep you informed through these broadcasts. So thank you for your continued support and for listening in. There will be a bit of a break, though, because I've been doing this for a while when I can. I do like getting away for a bit of sunshine at the start of the year. When it's a bit cold and wet and miserable here, I do like to get away and get some sun. So I am off on a two-week holiday to the Caribbean. I will tell you more about it when I get back, but it does mean there'll be a slightly longer break than normal between blogcasts. Just a quick reminder that you can hear my radio show Saturday afternoons between 2 and 4 at radio9springs.com, although that will be taking a break while I'm away as well. That is it for now, though. Thanks for listening. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I'll speak to you again in a few weeks or so. Bye-bye.